The United States has spent $8 trillion in the Middle East. We've lost thousands of brave soldiers and tens of thousands of terribly wounded people, great people. Their lives will never be the same. These wars produced only chaos and bloodshed. And all of the blood and treasure we sacrificed made the Middle East less, it's really, it's less safe. It's less stable and it's less secure. And I say it all the time, the single greatest mistake our country made in its history was going in to the quicksand of the Middle East. We spent $8 trillion and lost thousands of lives. And by the way, the other side, we can talk about that, lost millions of lives. What did we do? So we're going to pull them out and we're pulling people out and we're trying to make good deals and we're going to bring our soldiers back home. Welcome back. Trump's presidency may be coming to an end. Still, he's exposing the establishment cronies for what they really are. Globalist and establishment politicians have been blocking Trump from bringing our troops home. They have also been blocking him from appointing what he appointed from confirming an anti-globalist, very smart person to the Federal Reserve Board. Why? Let's get into it. America has been in Afghanistan for almost 20 years. Maybe you think the invasion was justified. Maybe you don't. Either way, I think most of us can agree that we shouldn't have been there for 20 years. Different people give you different answers when asked why have we been there for so long? You know, you get the Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, the military industrial complex. One you don't hear very often though is opium. Part of the reason for staying in Afghanistan was for the US military to burn and control the Afghani poppy fields. These poppy fields are then used to produce heroin, which ends up all over the world, primarily in the United States. So you could sort of understand why the US military would have an interest. However, opium production in Afghanistan has been steadily rising since 2001, not decreasing, increasing. In fact, in 2017, it reached an all-time high of 9,000 metric tons of opium. Now that is a good time. Could it be that the United States government is profiting off the opium sales? Could it be that they're not just cultivating it, but also distributing it? I know, it sounds far-fetched, but it's happened before. You see, in the 1980s, the CIA was selling Colombian cocaine to a dealer in LA called Ricky Ross. The rapper actually stole the dealer's name because it became notorious. The CIA was doing this to be able to fund its war against the Sandinista government in Nicaragua. So we have evidence of them doing it in the past. Why not now? Why is the opium production increasing? Why did it reach record highs? I thought you were there to control and burn. Huh. Comment your opinion down below, but it seems to me like it's enormously profitable to stay in Afghanistan, and that's why we got security experts and agents and establishment government officials voting against removing our troops. Trump has been trying to remove the troops for months now. He went to a vote this week, and of course, in a bipartisan attempt, a coalition of Republicans and Democrats, they voted against it. Even Mitch McConnell, the globalist turtle, voted against Trump. When arguing against the troop removal, one of the dumbest members of Congress, Senator Tammy Duxworth, said this. All of the military commanders have spoken up and said this is the wrong thing to do. We want our troops home, but let's not bring them home in, a, in body bags. And that's potentially what's going to happen if this president gets his way and puts his own political timeline ahead of our national security. Does that make sense to anyone? She's saying we want our troops home, so don't bring them home because they might come home in body bags? Excuse me, what? Excuse me, sir, what? If you don't want troops to die, bring them all home, Tammy, you dumb duck. Probably you meant to say was that removing troops would endanger the troops that remain there. And there's a very simple solution for that, Tammy. Bring them all home. Another Republican senator who voted against removing our troops was the Honorable Mitt Romney. Interestingly, Mitt Romney dodged the draft three times with three different exemptions. But when it comes to Afghanistan, he thinks we should be there 20 years plus. And it's not just Afghanistan, 
In Syria, we have shenanigans going on too. Retiring U.S. diplomat and head of special representative to Syrian engagement, James Jeffrey, admitted to lying to Trump about the amount of troops that were on the ground in Syria. In October of 2019, when we defeated ISIS, Trump said, all right, baby, bring the troops home. Military officials convinced him not to do so, so Trump agreed to leave 200 troops in Syria. Military officials lied to him and actually kept about 900 troops, saying they played shell games with Trump and senior staffers of the administration. These are unelected officials playing shell games with our commander in chief. Trump then said the quiet part out loud and said that the military wants to have troops in Syria to guard the oil fields. Military industrial complex, anyone? Deep state, anyone? We literally have unelected officials contradicting the military orders of our commander in chief. That's a deep state for you. Even though we've been ranking on McConnell today, sometimes he does good things and we don't want to give him the CNN negative treatment. We don't want to be the fake news. So let's see the positives he did this week. Trump appointed Judy Shelton to the Federal Reserve Board. The Senate, once again in a bipartisan fashion, blocked the appointment. Why? You may be asking yourself. Well, because she's controversial and even the media agrees. So that's how you know it's not true. Why is she so controversial? Well, among other things, she believes we should never have left the gold standard. And I agree. But I'm no economist. Comment your opinion down below. Judy also questioned the mission of the central bank, a big no-no in establishment circles. So she was blocked. And once again, the establishment wins. But not so fast. Here comes Turtle McConnell. Check out the turtle come out of its shell to once again try to further Trump's agenda. Are there any members in the chamber wishing to vote or change their vote? Seeing none, the yeas are 47, the nays are 50, and the motion is not agreed to. The majority leader. I enter a motion to reconsider the vote. Motion is entered. Hopefully he gets the revote. So when you read headlines about deranged Trump firing Pentagon and military officials, look into it. These people were lying to him. They were lying to the commander-in-chief of the United States military. Shame. Do you think we should bring our troops home? Why or why not? And what do you think about the gold standard? Comment your opinion down below. Like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.